All right. So, again, on the left side of your screen is Drew's team, and he's got a team of Slowbro, Rhyperior, Tapu Koko, Kartana, Salamence, and Incineroar. On the right, you've got Ethan Simpson using a team of Amoongus, Incineroar, Kartana, Landorus, uh, Latias, and Tapu Fini. So, Drew's team, pretty similar to what he brought yesterday, at least in the mons that are on there. Uh, Ethan completely changed it up. So Latias is a Pokemon that we haven't seen a whole lot of. A lot of dragons have kind of fallen off a little bit due to the rise of fairies and how strong some of these Tapus are. So Latias, not one we've seen a whole lot, but it does reach a really good speed tier of 110. It has a ton of bulk, access to recovery moves, can set Tailwind, can set Calm Minds and boost itself, and deal a lot of damage and just be a threat on the field for a long time. So there's a lot of options there. Um, it's interesting to see Amoongus and Tapu Fini on a team together. Because Tapu Fini blocks status moves, it makes Amoongus a little bit more difficult to uh, utilize if you're trying to use Spore. Um, although it can still contribute with uh, Rage Powder and stuff like that, which is always going to be important. So we may not be seeing a whole lot of Spores from this Amoongus because of the Tapu Fini on one side, Tapu Koko on the other side. Terrains are going to make it difficult um, for status conditions to be a win con. So I do like, we see both players have um, two Intimidate options, sharing that Incineroar. Um, so that could make it difficult for either player to utilize their physical attackers. So those Kartanas may not be able to do a whole lot of work in this set. So both players have selected their Pokemon and we're gonna jump right into turn one and let's see what they've decided to bring. So Ethan Simpson leading with Incineroar and Latias, and we do need to take a moment to tell him, hey, shiny Incineroar's ugly, please never bring that again. Um, but you know what, that's fine. So Incineroar, Latias facing down Tapu Koko and Salamence. So we see the electric train hit, we see the Intimidate come down, and then we see Incineroar's Intimidate come out as well. So as far as Intimidates go, you know, Incineroar, normally a physical attacker. Salamence, normally physical, sometimes mixed. Um, but in general, it deals more damage with its physical attacks. So those Intimidates are good on those two Pokemon. Latias and Tapu Koko, usually attacking especially, although Tapu Koko has seen some success as a mixed Tapu Koko. So there is potential that that mattered. Drew, not wanting to leave his Salamence in to take damage from Latias, uh, decides to switch it out, brings in Incineroar. Um, which is going to get another Intimidate on Ethan's Incineroar, as well as being able to threaten Fake Out um, on this upcoming turn. So we do see Latios Mega evolve into Mega Latios. Um, that's going to increase its bulk a lot and definitely give it some options. So Fake Out into the Tapu Koko slot. So good call there on Ethan's part. Um, you know, dealing, uh, getting out that Icy Wind and taking no damage. So now. Ethan is going to have to deal with, there is potential for Fake Out coming out from Incineroar, so maybe um, his Latias is about to take some damage. It naturally doesn't want to take a uh, Dazzling Gleam, potentially from Tapu Koko, that's going to deal a lot of damage. So Ethan, not wanting to take that damage, switches out into a uh, Landorus. So Landorus right now is going to be the fastest thing on the field, thanks to that um, Icy Wind that connected with both the Tapu Koko and the and Cinderar. So we do see Electroweb coming out from uh, Tapu Koko. That's going to slow down the Incineroar, but because it is a uh, electric type attack, it's not effective at all against Landorus. So Landorus takes no damage and doesn't have its speed reduced. Incineroar, rather than going for the U-turn, goes for a excuse me, rather than going for a fake out, goes for a U-turn, gets some switching priority here. So now Drew's got an option to bring in, you know, something to kind of counter what he's seeing on the field right now. That Tapu Koko does need to be a little careful. It's going to be slower than Landorus and is going to be taking damage from a potential earthquake here. Um, and we do see Salamence come out. That's going to drop and intimidate. That's going to really limit the damage potential of both this Incineroar and this Landorus. So that is a really key intimidate. And uh, depending on the item for this Landorus, you know, Salamence could be faster unless Landorus has carried a Choice Scarf. So haven't seen that information revealed yet. We're going to have to see. Um, Tapu Koko still in a little bit of a dangerous spot. So we do see Ethan switching out his Incineroar. That's going to give him a chance to uh, reset, fake out, bring another Intimidate in if he needs it. And also, importantly, 
allows him to uh, earthquake safely next to his partner due to his Latias having the ability to levitate. So Solomon's mega evolves and just goes for a protect, wants to scout out what Ethan is doing as hidden power from the lander is into the uh, Solomon slot, but into the protect. So a little interesting seeing a special lander is um, not sure on the speed tier because Tapu Koko did take that uh, speed drop. Uh, Landorus would have been faster regardless, so we're still not sure on the item. And we do see that uh, Latias is faster than Drew's Salamence, which is a little interesting. That indicates that his Salamence may be adamant or may not be full speed. And it takes a ton of damage from that this, uh, Icy Wind. Um, so we do see Drew targeted the Landorus slot with his Salamence. Um, must have forgot about the speed drop his Tapu Koko had received and was expecting um, Salamence to be moving after Tapu Koko for the landers to be on the field. So really unfortunate sort of a misplay there. Um, hopefully that doesn't go to his head too much, you know, so he can come back and play cleanly the rest of this game. You know, sometimes these players, Drew played a ton of Pokemon yesterday, you know, when you're exhausted, you can easily make silly mistakes like that. So Ethan, not wanting to leave Landorus out, goes ahead, Switches out, gets the big Intimidate off onto this uh, Salamence. That's going to be a really big thing, you know, since we did see the Double Edge coming out. It's going to reduce its damage as we do see another Icy Wind coming out. So that's going to put this Salamence in a really tough spot. You know, it barely is able to survive with only 6 HP. And this Tapu Koko is just slowly getting whittled down. Not taking a ton of damage, but its speed dropping is really key. However, this Nature's Madness, you know, is going to deal 50% to uh, the Latias. And will this Double Edge be enough to finish it off? And it's just not quite enough. And Salamence goes down to the recoil damage. So Latias taking a ton of damage. It could potentially heal itself back if it's carrying either Roost or Recover. Um, but it may be in a position where uh, it's going to go down soon. So big survival there. You really see the bulk of Latias coming through there. So Incineroar coming out, hitting this big Intimidate on both of these Pokemon again, um, going to be important for limiting the damage output of Ethan's Incineroar. Both Incineroars, this is their first turn on the field for now. So both of them have access to Fake Out, and we're going to have to see which one's faster if they're trading Fake Outs or what the uh, the goal here is. So given the move set on top of Coco, it's reasonable to um, expect it to be a Assault Vest variant. So we do see Ethan's Fake Out coming out before um, Drew's, um, indicating that his Incineroar could be faster than uh, Drew's. So the Latias went for the Recover, or for, for the Roost rather, and uh, you know took a Nature's Madness for its trouble, although it did gain uh, a net gain of health. We did see Incineroar flinch last, so indicating it didn't even go for a, uh, a fake out there since it moved after the uh, Latias and Tapu Koko. So this position, um, I believe Tapu Koko has only taken two Icy Winds, uh, which would mean that um, it may still be faster than Ethan's Incineroar, which is going to be important. However, you know, we do see the Incineroar coming out, attacking before the Tapu Koko. So this combination of attacks is able to take it out. And so that's a really big knockout for Ethan to take, because that could be protecting his uh, Latias from getting taken out. However, the U-turn is enough to pick up the KO. So Drew's going to be bringing in his fourth Pokemon here. And uh, then we'll see Incineroar coming back in on the returning turn. And Ethan's going to have a chance to uh, kind of respond. So we do see this Kartana, and Kartana is going to be a big threat. You know, it can be dealing a ton of damage to Ethan's Incineroar carrying the Sacred Sword. Um, and it can deal a lot of damage in general. So we'll see if um, Ethan has a way to outplay this, he does have fresh fake out on the field again, which is gonna be really important. Could give Drew a chance to uh, try and set a tailwind somehow, or um, you know, even a sword stance to potentially try and give Kartana the, uh, the stuff it needs to close out the game. Um, so Lander is coming down on the field for Ethan, dropping and intimidate two physical attackers on Drew's side of the field really big. Um, at the same time, Drew's Incineroar dropping and intimidate on Ethan's Incineroar and 
Landorus Therian going to be huge. So we do see the fake out come out into the Landorus as Earth Power is shown from Ethan's Landorus, uh, picks up a one hit KO on Kartana, and that's going to really be uh, close to closing the game out here. So the Intimidate turns out didn't matter at all on that Landorus since it is using special attacks. Uh, definitely not a problem. And we do see Drew looks like he's going to go ahead and forfeit, not seeing a way out for his um, Incineroar to take on three Pokemon. So a lot of key information was given that game, particularly um, the speed interactions between that Salamence and that um, the Latias. You know, normally we expect Salamence to be faster than Latias. Um, in this case, it wasn't indicating Drew's chosen to use a potentially an adamant natured Salamence um, or just not fully invested in speed. And so that w turned out to be really critical for Ethan in helping him take this game. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Drew trying to respond with a little bit of his Trick Room mode, although um, you always got to be careful bringing Trick Room just because Amoongus can be so very threatening to Trick Room. But um, uh, as I mentioned earlier during Team Preview, the terrains of both of the uh, Tapus preventing Amoongus from being able to spore things could be enough to give Drew the ability to really, really use Trick Room um, to counter Ethan's preferred form of speed control. So both players, not taking nearly as long that time, already have a game plan, and we're jumping into the game. All right, so we do see Drew leading with Slowbro and Tapu Koko. Um, in response, Ethan sticking with what works, Latias and Incineroar. So this is a strong lead. Um, for Ethan, he does have the potential to double into that slow bro with a ghost. I think we saw Shadow Ball earlier from his Latias, but I'm not 100% not certain. Uh, I wasn't paying super good attention, so that's my bad. Um, but Incineroar and Latias both being able to double into this uh, slow bro, although slow bro, if it is the Mega variant, has an absurdly high defense stat and may even be able to take that double target. Tapu Koko has been seen to be a little bit more on the uh, defensive side with the moves that it's using. Um, maybe not uh, going to be able to deal a whole lot of damage. However, Ethan, not wanting to deal with that right now, goes ahead and brings in Kartana. So Kartana is going to be in a strong position versus the Slowbro. It will have trouble breaking through its huge attack, or its huge defense, but it does have a pretty massive attack stat in order to do so. So we do see Tapu Koko go for the Nature's Madness. That's going to deal 50% to this Kartana and could be putting Kartana into range to take damage from, a, you know, like a potential Volt Switch or something um, that could really swing this game. So that fake out into Slowbro was really important. It gave Ethan a chance to uh, gain some field positioning um, without letting Trick Room come up. So it's going to be important. If Ethan wants to win this game, he needs to be able to get a uh, KO here. However, it looks like Sky Drop into the Tapu Koko, it, or from Tapu Koko, is going to be um, preventing that. But we do see Taunt revealed from Incineroar, further preventing Trick Room. So really well played by Ethan there, you know, um, to keep Trick Room from coming up. And this... Uh, Slowbro could be in a spot of trouble. So we do see dropping the uh, Kartana from Skydrop as Leaf Blade connects into this uh, Slowbro. It deals a ton of damage, but not enough to KO as Flare Blitz coming out into the Tapu Koko. That only deals about 50% damage. That is such a uh, thick Tapu Koko as Scald also into Incineroar, um, dealing a ton of damage, but activating a berry. So both sides have dealt a ton of damage this turn. Um, I'm sure Ethan wants to get rid of that slow bro. It took that Leaf Blade very well. A super effective attack from Kartana is nothing to uh, turn your nose at, but dang, its defenses are just really showing right now. Um, Kartana is getting pretty low on HP. It may be in range for a potential Bolt Switch from this Tabu Coco, and uh, knowing that Slowbro is unable to protect right now um, due to the taunt. Um, it could be in a position to just deal damage. 
Although Ethan does need to be careful with uh, potential for Drew to bring a Sky Drop, immobilizing one of his Pokemon for a turn um, could be a good way for Drew to swing the game a little bit and regain some positioning. All right, so we do see no switches as Tapu Koko goes for another Sky Drop into that Kartana as Flare Blitz misses into the Tapu Koko due to Tapu Koko being up in the air. And it looks like Incineroar just barely survived that second Scald, so this is going to be a really big turn for Ethan. He's got a chance to uh, just deal damage. Uh, the problem is that this Slowbro is going to be able to protect or trick room right now which means if he doesn't deal with it um he's going to be in trouble so we do see Slowbro go for the protect um as sky drop drops the cartana off it's going to get a chance to attack but will it attack into this protect or not no it goes into cartana and picks up the ko so that's going to be huge that's giving cartana plus one attack it's going to be able to deal a ton of damage now as we do see um the knockoff going into that slow bro slot so really good call by ethan you know he saw the flare blitz wouldn't have been enough to ko tapu koko anyways so let's do it with the uh, kartana and then my incineroar can uh deal with this slow bro so we do see drew's kartana coming out and this kartana is in a really really strong position because it threatens both of these Pokemon. There could be a speed tie, and so it's just a 50-50 on which one of these is going to move first. But uh, if Drew's Kartana does win the speed tie or does happen to be faster, like this is a chance for him to completely turn the game, you know, picking up a KO and uh, getting a beast boost out of it. So this is a really key turn, as we do see Drew's Kartana moving first, getting that Sacred Sword into Ethan's Kartana. Um, for a quick KO there. Now it's going to depend which Pokemon did this uh, Incineroar target, and it does look like he targeted the Kartana. So Flare Blitz into Kartana picks up the one-hit KO, um, but this Incineroar is going to get KO'd in return due to the recoil damage. Now if Drew used this turn to set Trick Room with his Slowbro, which he did, if he's got that Rhyperior in the back, this is going to be a strong position for him to be in. So we do see uh, Rhyperior coming out for Drew, and Rhyperior is just in prime position right now to just really deal a ton of damage. It does get intimidated by Ethan's Landorus, and that's going to be huge, but Landorus is in trouble from a Scald, um, neutral damage from any rock moves Rhyperior may go for. The saving grace here is that Rhyperior can't use um, any of its secondary stabs, and most of the time rock moves are going to have lowered accuracy. Um, so Ethan does have a little bit of an out there, We'll have to see how bulky these two Pokemon are, but uh, definitely playing from behind under Trick Room at the very least. So we do see Scald connecting into the... It, into the Landorus, dealing a ton of damage as Rock Slide comes out from Rhyperior, picks up the KO on Landorus, and does have the potential to cause this... Uh, does have the potential to cause Latios to flinch, however, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get the flinch. So we do see Roost successfully go off. Latios is, again, at full HP. Um, we did see yesterday this Rhyperior was carrying that Rocky MZ. Um, if it's carrying that, this could be a chance for Drew to deal a ton of damage. Um, we'll just have to see. As he does get the burn onto this uh, Latios, that's going to be really important for getting some damage over time applied as Rock Slide does connect and does cause the flinch. So this is a really strong position for Drew right now. If he's carrying that Rocky MZ to go ahead and close out the game, he might be able to get enough damage off right now. However, if he does uh, happen to miss the KO with a combination of attacks, Latias does have a chance to continue roosting back, roosting off all of the damage, stalling out Trick Room, and then potentially coming from behind to finish the game off. 
we do see the Z-move activate. Will this be enough? This Continental Crush is going to deal a ton of damage. Right here is the massive attack stat. Um, it's going to deal. It's going to deal a lot. But after that intimidate, is it going to be enough? And it is. So Drew taking this game, forcing a game three. So Drew really figured out, you know, in game one, my fast mode is going to not work so well because Latias just threatens, threatens that very well. So let's slow things down, go with trick, mo trick room mode. And despite the trouble he had in setting up the trick room due to fake out, due to taunt, he was eventually able to make it happen. And once he did, that was enough to close out the game. So Ethan's definitely got to be thinking, hey, this trick room mode is really threatening to me right now. How can I prevent it? What can I do to make sure Trick Room doesn't come up? And again, Drew definitely looking to, you know, this slow bro, we saw exactly how thick it was when it took a leaf blade from Cartana right on the chin, didn't even blink, was like, what, is that all you got? So Slowbro's got a ton of bulk, definitely gonna have plenty of opportunities to set up its trick room, as long as Drew can play properly. Those sky drops from Tapu Koko were huge in preventing the Slowbro from being attacked, um, really paid huge dividends towards the late game once Drew did manage to get trick room set up and give his Rhyperior a chance to just deal a ton of damage. Wouldn't be surprised to see Drew attempting to use the same game mode again, but he might, might want to switch it up just a little in order to keep Ethan on his toes. Ethan definitely, like, hey, I threw everything I had at preventing Trick Room and it wasn't quite enough. What else do I got? How else can I manage this? So here we go, Drew, once again, leading with this Slowbro and this Tapu Koko, finding that, hey, this had what I needed to get the job done. And Ethan switching it up just a little, saying, hey, Kartana was huge in this matchup, helped me deal a ton of damage, let's do so again. So Ethan's got a decent positioning here with these leaks. He's got fake out pressure available, and he's got Kartana, which is going to deal massive amounts of damage to either of these Pokemon. Um, however, we did see earlier, Kartana's not strong enough to pick up the KO in one hit, which means Tapu Koko is going to be able to potentially uh, deal some damage. So Ethan's got to pick which one is he going to fake out. Um, he needs to make sure Trick Room doesn't come up. Um, but having Trick Room come up while Tapu Koko's on the field maybe isn't the worst thing that could happen because Tapu Koko, being the fastest Pokemon on the field right now, would lose that speed advantage. So we do see no switches. Slowbro going ahead and Mega Evolving, taking advantage of its incredibly, incredibly buffed defense um, in order to potentially survive this Leaf Blade. As we do see Fake Out going into the Slowbro as Bolt Switch comes out from the Tapu Koko. And so this is actually really key because Tapu Koko's Getting out of here, um, potentially Incineroar could come in and be in a strong position. Uh, we could see, and there we do, we do see the Incineroar coming in. And so that's going to be huge, you know, with that fake out pressure, Drew could be able to uh, prevent a... Uh, can, can prevent either a Taunt or a Leaf Blade. The problem here is... Drew can only prevent one of those things. He can only fake out one thing, so he's got to make the right call. Ethan's got to be thinking, all right, which one of my Pokemon is more threatening? What's more likely to get uh, faked out? Because this uh, sword stance was just a really, really strong move to go for, um, giving him going from neutral to minus one due to intimidate, and then to plus two, or plus one after Sword Stance gets plus two, should be enough in order to pick up that KO on Slowbro with the Leaf Blade. However, if he gets um, if he gets faked out, deals no damage, could be in a lot of trouble. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this turn plays out, you know? We haven't seen Drew go for a whole lot of fake outs. Um, 
as he doesn't go for it here and choosing to swap out for his uh, swap his Incineroar out for uh, Tapu Koko and Ethan making the safe play doubling into that Slowbro slot definitely making sure Trick Room doesn't come up so Drew gained a little bit of positioning here however again we're in the same position where this Tapu Koko can sky drop something but it can only sky drop one of them so it's going to be interesting to see which of these things um true feels is the bigger threat of course we could see a uh, another switch and we do see slowbro not wanting to get ko'd at incomes and cinerar so that's going to be huge that puts this uh cartana back at neutral which is going to be really big and Tapu Koko goes for the Volt Switch again, so it's gonna it's gonna make a big difference here on which one of these Pokemon was targeted right here. Um, if Ethan made a read here, although he was in a little, I I don't I don't anticipate seeing a hard read of any sort from Ethan's side of the field because he had way more to lose by missing the read um, if Drew stayed in. So Drew's taking his time deciding what he wants to replace this Tapu Koko with, and he's been doing a really good job of just uh, slowly whittling on this Kartana and uh, getting it in a position where it can't deal damage. However, we did see Ethan went for another Swords Dance, so really ballsy play there. Uh, as he went for the taunt into the Slowbro slot, uh, which turned out to be Incineroar. So Incineroar unable to protect now, at the very least, and again, can only fake out one of these Pokemon. Meanwhile, Ethan's Kartana is sitting at plus two. So fake out coming out here could deal a ton of damage, or not a ton of damage, but it's going to prevent Ethan from doing what he wants to do. And uh, again, Ethan's got to be careful. He can't have this... Uh, Slowbro um, wrecking house all day. So Ethan deciding to switch out his Incineroar, bring in Tapu Fini as we do see the Slowbro switching out. So I do wonder what True's gone for with his Incineroar here. As Incineroar does go for a fake out into the Kartana slot. So this Kartana is in range to be KO'd by Tapu Koko, which is going to be huge. Um, however, Tapu Koko could also deal a ton of damage to this Tapu Fini um, with some electric type attacks. And so we see Tapu Fini switching out, not wanting to take a big electric attack on the chin like that, as Incineroar comes in. And Ethan, wanting to protect his Kartana, doesn't want it taking any damage right now, as it is in KO range. So, big protect there. Um, he will be in a position. Fake Out is active on uh, Ethan's side of the field. Uh, he's got his Fake Out available. And anticipating that Tapu Koko potentially having a... Uh, Assault Vest and being unable to protect itself uh, from this fake out, Ethan could go ahead and try and use this turn to just deal damage there. We have seen Drew being really defensive of his Slowbro, not wanting to get any damage, knowing that the key to game two was getting that Trick Room up, and he's done a ton of positioning to try to get himself into a spot where he can do so. Um, we're just going to have to see this. Uh, Kartana's currently at plus two, and Cinnaror coming in, putting it down to plus one, thanks to Intimidate. Did Ethan make the read he needed to make here? Because this Kartana's not going to be able to stick around that much longer. So we do see the Slowbro going for the Protect. Fake out into the Incineroar slot. Did he do it? Oh, Ethan's going for the Z-move, all out pummeling. If that's into the cart, uh the Incineroar slot, this is going to be a huge turn for him because it's going to turn away um, any potential for Drew to keep cycling these Intimidates. 
So we've got the animation coming out. Where's it into? It is into Incineroar. So what a call from Ethan right there. You know, there have been plenty of switches and everything else, and he finally got the right one. So taking that Incineroar off the field is just a huge advantage for Ethan now. It takes away a ton of true switching uh, capabilities as well as, you know, makes it a lot easier for Ethan to deal with how am I going to prevent Trick Room from coming up right now? So we do see Tapu Koko hit the field. Um, it's going to be able to pick up a KO on this Kartana if it wants. Um, but it's not going to be able to prevent Ethan from preventing Trick Room. So we're going to have to see if Drew goes for um, you know some more switching, trying to get positioning set up. As we do see Drew wanting to preserve his Incineroar. Um, saying, hey, maybe if Trick Room comes up right now, I've got it done. As Taku Koko goes for the Electro Web, that will be enough to pick up the KO on Kartana, as well as dropping the speed on his uh, Latios. However, we do see a Scald going up rather than a Trick Room, so not a bad trade. Kartana's done its job. <laughs> it finally sniped and Incineroar, but it, ta it had taken so much damage in the process that... Uh, it was able to be picked off by this Tapu Koko. So Ethan's picking which of his mons does he want to bring in. He's got Incineroar or Tapu Fini in the back. Um, neither one really wants to face down this uh, Tapu Koko that much, but uh, deciding that Tapu Fini, best option I've got right now at least. So this Tapu Koko, has just been a really uh, annoying Pokemon for Ethan so far um, in this set and in this game in particular. It's helped Drew get his positioning down with Volt Switch being able to keep cycling Incineroar in and out trying to get in a position. And now it looks like Drew may finally be in a spot where he can set up a Trick Room. Although the question is, does he want to do so right now? Because he's going to be um, in a tough position trying to get a Pokemon in sacrificing one of the he currently has you know if he's got Rhyperior um, available as his fourth doesn't want that coming in um, on a potential muddy water so we do see the nature's power into uh, the Latios as The Nature Tower into the Latios as uh, Latios goes for a Psy Shock into Tapu Koko, and more importantly, uh, Tapu Fini sets up a Calm Mind. So that's going to help it face down this uh, Tapu Koko just a little bit better, as well as not having the terrain available to it. So that's a really big turn for Ethan. Um, he does want to get some speed control still in order to make his. Fini able to attack into this Tapu Koko first. So we do see Tapu Koko going for a Sky Drop here um, as Latias goes for a Roost. So that's going to be huge. And we could see this could be the turn that Drew's going for his Trick Room, and it is. So that's a huge turn because thanks to the way this Trick Room works, he's now disabled this uh, Tapu Fini for two turns. The turn he picked it up and the turn he puts it down. So that's just a really great opportunity that Drew has taken. And now, now could be his chance to go ahead and bring in um, his Incineroar, if he's, or not his Incineroar, his uh, Rhyperior, if he's got it. So Tapu Koko coming down after the uh, attacks have all happened um, prevented that Prevented that Tapu Fini from doing anything this turn and dealing some damage. However, uh, Drew's not threatening a whole lot of offense right now, um, just because Scald's not very effective against both Pokemon. Tapu Koko, it does have access to this Nature's Madness. So we see another Scald coming out, just slowly tr trying to get some chip damage coming out as a Psy Shock into the Tapu Koko. Will it be enough? Not quite as Muddy Water will be able to connect and pick up this KO. Um, we could see an accuracy drop on the uh, Slowbro, which we do, and so that could be that could be game changing right now. If uh,
if the Slowbro misses too many moves, it could be in a lot of trouble. So we do see this Rhyperior definitely threatening that Continental Crush right now could deal a ton of damage. Uh, we do know Ethan's got Incineroar in the back, so there's a chance to uh, try and stall out an extra turn with the Fake Out as it comes out. And that looks like that's exactly what Ethan wants to do. Going ahead, getting an Intimidate out on this opposing Rhyperior, um, which could be really important. However, he's really, really banking on not getting KO'd in that, uh, what was the Latias slot with his Incineroar. So we do see the Psy Shock into the Tapu Fini, into the Protect as Continental Crush coming out. And the slot that Drew picked for this attack is going to be crucial. If it's into the Protect on that uh, Tapu Fini slot, you know, it's not going to deal a whole ton of damage. But if it's into that Incineroar, it's going to pick up a KO. And it is into Incineroar. This is going to deal a ton of damage. And it's definitely enough to pick up a KO despite that Intimidate. Like, get out of here, Incineroar. So one important thing there was, um, if Ethan is carrying a 50% uh, berry on his top of, you know, he could have wanted to take that Psy Shock just as a way to uh, get some HP back. It's going to be really important here to see. Um, I believe there's only one turn of Trick Room remaining, and uh, Ethan definitely wants to uh, stall that out if he can. So. Rocks like connecting with the Tapu Fini is not enough to pick up the KO and activates the berry. Um, so this is a huge, huge turn for Ethan as Muddy Water comes out and connects with both Pokemon at plus one. That's going to deal a ton of damage to Rhyperior. Rhyperior getting taken down with a critical hit. Not sure that matters too much, um, but definitely adds some insult to injury as... Uh, the Slowbro also takes another accuracy drop, and so that's going to make it a little bit more difficult for Drew to uh, get the damage uh, that he needs to finish the game. As we do see, Trick Room goes ahead and resets, so we're currently facing a plus one Tapu Fini and a plus one Latias. Um, depending on the moves available that Ethan's got, he might be able to close it out this turn. As we do see Psyshock into the Slowbro attacking on Slowbro's physical defense, which is considerably higher, and Moonblast is plus one Moonblast going to be enough to pick it up. It is. So there you have it, folks. Ethan taking revenge for his losses yesterday and giving Drew a first round loss. So what a set that was. Um, really hard fought positioning on both sides. And uh, in game three, we saw that Ethan was able to limit. Drew's options while he was trying to set up Trick Room, and so by the time Drew did get Trick Room set up, he'd already taken too much damage and just didn't quite have enough stuff left um, to close out the game. So really good set. That was a ton of fun to watch. Uh, stick around because we're going to be coming back with more Pokemon once round two starts.